So a rare video where we're here together at my house and we're going to be talking about the five things that we think every photographer should have in their bag. Stick around. So Bill challenged me the other day to put five accessories in my bag that I can't live without, that I always take out with me. You know, that's in addition to your camera and whatever lenses you need. Um, I'm talking about other accessories other than that. Right, right. Uh, which like is, you need your tripod, right. you need your camera, you need your lenses. I'm like, what are those other things that you throw in the bag that what you'd be out shooting, you'd, you'd look at the, be like, oh man, I can't believe I forgot that. Right, so which what, was where? a little stressful putting that together. Because normally what I'll do is I have 10, 20 different bags, but I have three, you know, small, a medium, a large bag. So I'll go out based on, you know, which bag I want to bring. So if I want to bring my small bag, I'll put as much stuff in there as I possibly can. You know, holding myself to only five accessories, only five things that I must have with me is a little hard because you got to leave some stuff behind. Yeah. So we're going to jump right into this. And the, so when we got together today, I said, okay, what were your five things and what were my five things? And there were a few that were, that were the same. We both agreed on the same thing. So uh, the, one of the first things that we both agreed about was extra batteries. This is something that you may forget it sometimes and you just had a problem with this, right? Yeah, I just had a problem. I was out shooting a video at a lighthouse a couple of weeks ago comparing my 5D Mark IV to the M50 and just as I was about to start the second part of my shooting, the battery died on the M50 and I didn't have a spare with me and I was you know, a half hour from even my car where I could even go and charge it. So that whole shoot was shot because of that. And you must have been like, I can't believe I exactly, forgot the extra. Exactly right. right. So this morning when I went to do this video right here, I was setting the camera up. I put a battery in. It was dead. The second battery I put in the camera was dead. Luckily, I had a third battery for the M50 that was fully charged. And I threw it in the camera and immediately started charging the other ones. So even though you have the best intentions, you come home, you think you're going to charge. Sometimes life happens and you don't get that time to recharge everything and get your bag set up perfectly for the next time you go out. So it's great to just have extra batteries. So that is one of the things that we both agree on that you must have. Yeah, and they, they lose their lifespan a little bit, you know, the, the older that they are. So even if a battery works great and you get a lot of use out of it from the beginning, definitely as soon as you get a camera, get yourself a spare battery for that. Or two. So like I said, you have to have your camera obviously with you and you have to have lenses. And you know, depending on you know, what type of lenses you shoot with, whether it's zooms or primes, you wanna have your focal range covered. Um, so, you know, for me, I shoot primes, I have a 24, a 50 maybe, and then like a 135 in my bag all the time. So I have that range covered. But in addition to that, I also always shoot with filters. I always have a circular polarizer filter with me, not only in you know sunny daytime conditions, but really all the time. There's a lot of different situations that you can use to cut out glare and things like that. So I always have in my bag, no matter what, a polarizing filter with me. I did a video about it. You can check that out. We'll put a link to it here. The way that these work, you can check the video, is basically, like I said, it cuts out the some of the glare. It'll give you, when you have blue skies, puffy clouds, things like that, it'll give it more definition in the sky. And no matter how many lenses you have, you really don't need multiple polarizing filters. You can get one that fits them all. You can get the largest size filter that you need. So if my largest diameter lens is 82 millimeters. So I can get an 82 millimeter polarizing lens and then get a step up ring that will allow me to attach that to any of my other size lenses. Now, I don't use a polarizing filter as much as Eric does. I have one in my, you know, my little bag here, but the one filter that I always have in my bag and I use almost every time I go out are ND filters. And I especially use them during the day when I'm shooting people because I can use a very shallow depth of field when I'm using a flash um, without overexposing the image. And then for long exposures during the day, I'm always using ND filters and, you know, it's just one of those go-to items that I always have in my bag because I never know when I'm going to want to make that creative shot or it's going to be a super sunny day. And I, it's just one of those things that I think every photographer should have in their bag. Yeah, and you can slow your shutter down by stopping your aperture down to a really small opening like F16 or F22, but in outdoor sunny conditions, you're never going to be able to get your shutter speed slow enough to get you know two or three second long exposures, right? So and an if ND you filter, right? But if you do what you just said, you're also losing that shallow depth of field that make portraits or taking right. pictures of people 
look so great where you can separate them out from the background. So if you have to stop down to F16, now everything is going to be in focus and you're not going to get that really soft, beautiful background that you want in your images. Right. So an ND filter, like a 10 stop ND filter, you'll be able to shoot wide open at like F2.8 and get long exposures, 5, 10 seconds long in the daytime. Right. And a three stop is what I use when I'm shooting people and I have my lens open to f2 or f1.8 or f1.4 even and and it I still get a fast enough shutter speed to get nice sharp shots but I can also shoot wide open so I just mentioned when I was talking about the filters that I like to shoot with a flash during the day and I did this last week when or a couple of weeks ago when I was away uh, I had to take a lot of images of people of uh, characters of all sorts of different things and I had to have a flash with me. And I don't always have a flash out and on my camera, but it's always in my bag just in case. I never know what situation I'm gonna come up against. And I'm not talking about just the pop-up flash that comes with your camera. Why would you wanna get a, a speed light like this instead of the pop-up? Well, it's a lot more powerful, first of all. Uh, if you need to fill in shadows and bright sunlight conditions, uh, a big flash like this is much more powerful for that. It also moves the flash further away from the center of the lens. Uh, this way the shadows are a little bit more pleasing. It doesn't flatten out the image. You don't get any red eye uh, because the red eye is basically when the flesh is firing out from you know the top of the camera shooting directly at the person and bouncing back. That's how you get your red eye. So a flesh like this actually moves the flesh further away from the center of the lens. Yeah and you have a you know the, the flashes move you know you, you have the ability to control the light a little bit. They, they move, they twist, you can kind of get creative with the lighting but just if you just simply want to take a picture of somebody during the day throw a flash on top of your camera it'll just get rid of all the shadows on their face and you'll just get a more pleasing image yeah it really does make a big difference try it out you'll see it makes such a huge difference when you use flash especially taking pictures of people in the daytime so a flash is one of those things you want in your bag something else I always have with me and it's easy because it's really very small is a remote shutter release uh, this one is made by Canon most of the camera brands have them and they're even off brands. All it is is a button basically and I can shoot infrared, trigger the shutter on my camera. I just pointed at it. I need to be you know, within a few feet away, 20 feet away. The reason you want to use this is if you're on a tripod or you have your camera propped on something and you can't touch it in order to take the picture, you don't want to have that camera shake, you can fire the shutter using a remote release like this. Something that would work even better than that is an actual wired cable release. Which is what I use. I don't have you know you can you can use your phone also to release the camera if you have a Wi-Fi capabilities with your phone but this is a this is a pretty simple way to do it this um, is another way to do it but you have to be obviously within reach of your camera but this actually can lock off so let's say you're doing a nighttime exposure and you want it to be open for 15 minutes you can you know press the shutter in bulb mode lock it off and it'll, the shutter will just stay open until you come back and you know release it and there's also more advanced versions of these that have intervalometers right, in them right. and there's the, you know there's all sorts of things that you can have but anytime you want to take an image where you don't want to touch your camera um, these are great to have and these are something that I think live in both our bags all the time right plus if you want to take a picture on a tripod of your family and there's no one else around to take a picture something like this works right you get all set up you fire the shutter just like that yeah there is nothing worse than getting back home and you took this beautiful image and you know it and you open it up in the computer and there's spots on the image. There's water spots or there's some sort of smear or there's something, your lens had something on it. So you had a dirty lens and you took the image and now there's nothing you can do about it unless you want to spend a ton of time in the computer removing spots and trying to fix things. So we've talked about the lens pen before but this is this is always, this isn't even in my bag, this is in my pocket. I keep this in my pocket as soon as I take my camera out of the bag, this goes in my pocket and I am constantly wiping dust. You know, it's got the little charcoal tip and then it's got the, uh, the brush on the other end and these things are indispensable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always clean my gear before I go on, especially a photo trip. I spend, you know, a couple of hours at home you know, with the with the microfiber cloth and the cleaning solution, cleaning off my stuff as much <laughs> as I possibly can. But the, I don't really need to do it because every time I get to where I'm going, I pull my camera out for the first time. I'm out in the daylight, in the sunshine, and I look at it, and it looks like it was just it has been through a war. There's yeah. just smears and dust all over it and everything. Without a doubt, every single time, anytime I look at my lens, I see a spot. I see anything on there. If it's just dust, I'll use the brush, brush it off, no problem. If there's a spot that won't come off with that 
the little charcoal tip, rub it on there, and then brush it off, spotless. Works every single time. Right, so it comes with this little microfiber cloth, and this is what typically you would use to use on a camera right. lens, right? right. This, so you have a microfiber cloth, but I found over the years, especially when you're shooting in damp conditions or by the beach when there's a chance of salt or, yeah. you know, who knows, these just smear things. Yeah. And, you know, the lens pen actually comes in this cloth. This stays in my bag. I don't use it ever. Right. This is this is what you want. Get one of these. Definitely get a lens pen. Get a couple. Get, I get have two, three. You know, I have get, a few of these in my bag in case I lose one. So yes. I, because I always want to have it with me. Yeah, we're gonna do a bonus number six here. This, this is one of the best photography tools that we have. Your phone, and you're saying why? Well, because this is becomes a, a multi-purpose tool in your arsenal of photography when you're using it. Right. So yeah, we talked about you know the the remote shutter release. Um, Really, all, whatever camera you get, uh, there's going to be a, an app that you can actually go along with it. And you can sync it up with your camera to where you can actually use your phone to actually control the camera. You can use it to fire the shutter. You can use it you know, right on here. You can change the settings and things like that. So if you have a camera a set up someplace else, yeah, it's a viewfinder. You can look right in here and see exactly what the camera sees. Right. So something like that is great. It's great to be able to transfer images from your camera to your phone. The apps that go along with your phone will do that. And then there are other apps that aren't actually part of your camera system, third-party apps as well that we use all the time. Yeah, so Eric did a, um, a video where he talked about all of the different apps or the five best apps for your phone. I'm right. gonna put a card up here for that. But there are so many ways that you can use different types of apps. So, I, well, in the phone, I use the stopwatch feature all the time yeah. when we're shooting fireworks and also when you're doing long exposures you, most cameras have a what like a 30 second where you can run a long exposure and then you're in bulb mode and bulb mode basically you can keep the shutter open as long as you want but if you don't have some way to keep track of time you don't know if you're bracketing exposures let's say you want to do a minute two minutes and five minutes or right. you know you need some way to track time right. so that's one way that we use it and then there's also um, different apps that you can use to for ND calculation right. Right? the ND calculator apps are great you know if you're in a situation where you need to shoot like we were talking about before the ND filters during the daytime and you have a 10 or 15 stop filter on there doing the math on that sometimes is you know, nearly impossible you know just in an instant you can see what your exposure is now you can add your ND filter factor in there and it'll give you your exact shutter speed and then in that app itself you can just hit start and it'll count down it the exposure down. for you so I something used, like that is great yeah i used that when we were shooting the disneyland book i did a super i did like a nine minute uh, long exposure on main street in disneyland of the castle with all the guests just blurred all over the place in it and i had 15 stop i had a 15 stop nd filter on the and i could not see through it i didn't know what my exposure was going to be the camera was all messed up it right. couldn't read anything and I used the app on my phone and I had to rely on it and it worked perfectly. And that, that picture is a double page spread in the book. And I never would have been able to get that right. without the app. Or I would have sat there for hours trying to, you know, do nine minutes and see it wasn't right. And then have to wait another 10 minutes to see if, it, you know, it was, it's, it makes life a lot easier. It does. And there's a lot of other apps. There's one called TPS that we use for the position of the sun. You know, if you're shooting sunrises or sunsets, you could know exactly where you need to be what location you need to be, where the sun's going to be in relation to your image, check that one out definitely. It gives you really, really precise sun location information for sunrises, sunsets, and midday also for shooting. Yeah, so that, those will be in that card. Um, so check that out there. I'll, I'll link it right to Eric's video this way you can see it. And uh, we hit a milestone. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we've been uh, doing this for a year now. Yep, today is the one-year anniversary of this YouTube channel. And yep. uh, it's been great. We've really enjoyed interacting with so many of you and... Um, it's uh, it's been a it's been a, an interesting creative outlet for yeah, us. It for definitely sure. has been. Yeah, and thank you to everybody who watches. Thank you to everybody who comments, uh, because it gives us great feedback as far as what we're doing. And we've learned a lot uh, this right. year. That's you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And the kind of questions that people have, the kind of things that you guys are looking for, you know, your comments really really help us out as far as that goes. Okay, so here's to another year for us, and uh, you know, it's been great, and yeah. uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to what happens next year. Yeah, so if you want to see another year, definitely give this a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on a notification bell, this way you get notified every time we post a video. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>